Sometimes addressing judicial independence requires us also to consider judicial accountability. Sometimes protecting judges against interference also means protecting them even when they're not doing their job properly. We can see how this is played out in the UK by considering the case of Justice Peter Smith. Mr Justice Smith was born in 1952 and studied law at Cambridge. After graduating from Cambridge, he lectured in law at the University of Manchester, whilst simultaneously building up his practice at the bar. He was appointed to the Chancery Division of the High Court in 2002, and dealt with the typical cases heard in the Chancery Division, involving commercial disputes and intellectual property issues. At a certain point in time, Mr Justice Smith began to be regarded as a colourful figure. He came to national attention in 2006 when he was called upon to decide a copyright case involving the Da Vinci Code. Smith embedded a code of his own in the judgment, a code which could be cracked by looking at certain italicised letters in the text. That case didn't lead to any formal action, that would come later, but it's helpful to pause here to review the regulations on judicial misconduct in the UK. Under the Judicial Discipline Regulations of 2014, the Lord Chief Justice and Lord Chancellor may refer judges to the Independent Judicial Conduct Investigations Office. I've illustrated that here with pictures of the current occupants of those two offices. For High Court judges, referral to the Judicial Conduct Investigations Office can lead to a formal warning or a reprimand. It cannot lead to the judge being removed or sacked. Removal is only possible where the Lord Chancellor moves an address in both Houses of Parliament. This has only happened once and never in England and Wales. In 1830, Sir Jonah Barrington, pictured here, a judge of the Irish High Court of Admiralty, was removed from office on grounds of corruption. Turning back to Mr Justice Smith, the next controversy did result in a formal reprimand. The controversy related to the issue of recusal. Smith had been in conversations with Adelshaw Goddard, a firm of solicitors based in London. Smith was trying to work out whether he could leave judicial office and start working for Adelshaw Goddard. At the same time, one of the partners in Adelshaw Goddard, a Mr Paul Howell, was involved in a trusts case, Howell and others versus Lees Malays and others. Adelshaw Goddard were acting as the solicitors in this case. The case was scheduled to be heard by Peter Smith. The barrister for Howell made an application for the judge to recuse himself on the grounds that he was in discussion with Howell's firm about employment and that this might create the perception of impropriety. Peter Smith refused this application in writing and refused it again when the barrister made the application in person. The barrister for Howell was so upset by the terms of this refusal that he appealed against the decision on recusal and indeed he won this appeal. The language of the appeal, which involves a couple of judges writing about the behaviour of another judge, is understated, as you might imagine, but by the standards of English judicial language, it's a lot. Smith's language was described as intemperate and extraordinary. He himself was too personally involved to guarantee objectivity. This case led to Smith's formal reprimand. So eight or nine years later, Smith got into trouble again. He had taken a flight with British Airways to Florence. On that flight, the baggage staff had failed to load luggage in time, leaving Smith trapped in Florence without any of his bags. Smith was so upset that he wrote to the chief executive of British Airways, Willie Walsh, telling him that he was a judge and that he was scheduled to hear a case involving British Airways and certain haulage issues. This time, 
perhaps remembering what had happened in 2006-7, Smith called in counsel in the case and advised them he was potentially conflicted and minded to recuse himself. But whilst counsel were there, Smith, incredibly, started quizzing them about how BA handles luggage in general and his luggage in particular. This led to the opening of an investigation by the Judicial Conduct and Investigations Office. The investigation started in July 2015. A judge was nominated to hear the investigation sometime in late 2015. Smith was given the opportunity to make an initial response, which he did early in 2016. The disciplinary panel met in late 2016 and was supposed to meet again in March 2017, but failed to do so. By this time, Peter Smith had reached pensionable age. He eventually resigned just before the panel could meet. Some commentators, like the Times' Joshua Rosenberg, suggested that Smith was offered an easy way out, but stubbornly held on so that he could collect his pension. All told, it seems that it is very difficult to sack a judge in the UK, even when they abuse their role.